Now to our special report. Americans face a rising movement against democracy. President Biden is warning about semi-fascism here in the U.S. The news out of Italy is a party founded by allies of its actual fascist dictator, but you know Mussolini just won a huge election, putting Giorgia Maloney on track to lead Italy, a right-wing candidate who has ties to convicted Trump aide Steve Bannon. Reports there you heard emphasize that these results, brand new, show rising and mainstream Italian support for a right-wing party. Maloney is on track to be the next prime minister. And her party has ties to the infamous Mussolini. She campaigned with his granddaughter, you see there in the center, Maloney on the left. Their modern rallies blatantly feature this tricolor flame, which is viewed as a symbol of the hard right authoritarian movement in Italy today. This is news tonight because it goes way beyond symbols. Italian leaders have tried to turn the page from Mussolini, Hitler's staunch ally. That was the old playbook. But Maloney actually rose through the ranks as a young activist backing the controversial effort to actually rehab the dictator Mussolini's legacy. Everything he did, he did for Italy. Let's be clear, whether you think we should have to say this or not out loud in life or on the news, Mussolini was a brutal dictator and Hitler ally who founded the National Fascist Party, who ran a police state, who helped spread the seed of fascism across Western Europe going into the horrors of World War II. So the claim you just heard from the younger version of this candidate, that was too much even for this general election. Maloney walked back those statements and now says, quote, fascism is history. So she's pitching a twist on right-wing authoritarian politics, but she's still clear about her hard right views, attacking immigrants, minorities, democratic norms. She's pushed the racist, anti-Semitic great replacement theory that we've reported on before. It warns that immigrants are taking over the sort of, quote, rightful white majority. That conspiracy theory first came from a French intellectual, and it's found an airing everywhere from right-wing politics in Europe to Tucker Carlson right here in America. It's also been cited by multiple mass murderers trying to start racial civil wars. Now, Maloney hurled it as an attack on liberals in her own country's government, claiming they were funding invasions to replace Italians with immigrants. Now, this is really a somewhat coded version of the hate that has torn apart Europe before, which uses propaganda to whip up hate and discrimination against minorities while claiming those minorities are so powerful they must be stopped, or worse. So given that we're talking about this Mussolini-allied party, remember he said, quote, the entire white race could be submerged by other races of color that multiply. And while there can be valid debates over immigration policy, advocating, say, a lower migration levels is not the definition of fascism, Maloney has gone way beyond all that. She opposes democratic values like religious freedom. She talks about banning mosques or being allowed to even communicate in a foreign language in Italy. These are the kind of attacks on religion and freedom that did correlate with that march Europe made towards its darkest days in World War II. Siamo a Marciano, in Umbria, in un sito dove dovrebbe nascere un'altra moschea, per dire no, no alla nascita di nuove moschee. Vogliamo sapere chi predica nelle moschee, vogliamo che quelle prediche vengano fatte in italiano perché qui siamo in Italia. When the people with power say no to a house of worship, you have to remember it does not matter which house of worship. Could be synagogues, could be mosques, could be churches. But they want to use their power there in Italy and other places to control your freedom, your mind, your human rights. And we know where that leads. This is not a drill. Now, this kind of hate ebbs and flows in history, but it is generally one of the enduring tools of authoritarians and fascists. So, yes, Jews in one era, Muslims in another, Catholics in another. And in one region, it could be targeting immigrants at that very border. In another, just any racial minorities. They could be 
several countries away, but they are the specter that animates the hate, which justifies the end of democracy. History shows a stark difference between patriotism and nationalism, and how nationalists will fuse that hate of the other with this extreme pride in their group, which could be country, or a version of the leadership of that country, or of course, race, which is a social construction. You have to remember how they treated other minority groups and Jews as a different race. That race just becomes a system of oppression designed to oppress and suppress and hurt people. Mussolini gave thunderous addresses in Italian, whipping up these very emotions. You have to keep that in mind when you hear politicians today trying to rehab what he did and st what he stood for. And before the Axis and his alliance with Germany, before they were fighting the U.S., Mussolini tried his hand at telling Americans, cannot make it up. Mussolini telling Americans they could make America great. Soprattutto, un fatto nuovo nella storia dell'umanità. Il popolo italiano che è il protagonista della sua storia. I am very glad to be able to express my friendly feelings towards the American nation. E mai, come oggi, abbiamo sentito che il destino è nelle nostre mani e che questo sarà il capolavoro della nostra invincibile volontà. I agree with wonderful energy the American peace and I see and recognize among you sons of your land as well as ours, my fellow citizens who are working to make America great. He was talking about making America great in 1927. He went on to fight America as part of the Axis. MAGA leaders like Steve Bannon also have some fingerprints in this right-wing surge in Europe. He's been paying attention. Bannon sees that neo-branding as a kind of Trojan horse for the agenda that he clearly knows comes out of the fascist groups. We should note he also later tried to walk back some of that blunt theorem as recorded there. The neo-fascists have now gotten further in Italy than other countries, but this is not just a story about Italy tonight. It is a story about what you see on your screen, the rising mainlining support for anti-democracy and sometimes hateful movements in countries from Italy to America to France. Consider that a hard-right group founded by neo-Nazis and skinheads became the largest party in Sweden's likely governing coalition just last week. Or that far-right leader we just had on the screen, Le Pen, reaching the final round of the French president elections this year for a second consecutive time, as the Times reports. And America watches this Trump-era Republican Party openly embrace authoritarian tactics, and now, really, many of its leaders defending what was documented as a failed coup. As the New York Times sums it up, more than 70 years after Nazis and fascists nearly destroyed Europe, formerly taboo parties with Nazi or fascist heritages that were long marginalized have elbowed their way into the mainstream. A page of European history seems to be turning. It is Italy, though, the birthplace of fascism with the first Italian leader whose party can trace its roots back to the wreckage of Italian fascism. It's all out in the open. If you've been busy and haven't closely followed what's happening in Europe, it's time to pay attention. The fascism that begins in Europe does not tend to just stay there. And as we showed you, other people are following this. The Bannons of the world have been on this. They know her name. They're working with her. They're talking to her. And if you consider the facts we just went through, a fascist link party with a leader who defended Mussolini and wants to ban religion and embrace replacement conspiracy theories against Jews and minorities, is her electoral progress, this winning race, a good thing? Well, Senator Cruz has been following it. He says the win is spectacular. Other Republicans here offering their congratulations. That is chilling. If you don't want to be seen as a semi-fascist, if you complain when Biden calls you that, then don't tout neo-fascists. 
enough with the caveats when we're talking about fascism. And if you don't want to relive the worst parts of the modern era, you got to learn history and follow today's events, which they become history. And the point here is not left or right. It's sometimes described as a conservative concern that governments can pose more harm than good. Those fascists and acts, these governments certainly showed that, though they were right-wing governments. And sometimes described as a liberal concern that all people must have inalienable human rights, that the march of progress and civilization and improving our states and governments is actually finally trying to come through on that. Well, that means rights for not just the people in charge or people who look a certain way. And this runs deeper than any ideology. This is about power and tyranny, about that great grand question that we don't always get to the heart of it when we talk here on these news nights. But it was the question in World War II, and it's the question cropping up here. Can we, as societies in this modern world with so many ways that people can hurt each other and so many ways the government can rule, can we live together or will we ultimately destroy ourselves? It's well known that the forces against democracy sometimes build power by winning elections and then trying to cancel the next ones. That's happened in Europe before. Putin won his first election, and there weren't any more fair ones. It can happen again there. As Sinclair Lewis warned Americans in 1935, it can also happen here. So are we going to be aware of these facts, and what are we going to do about them? Hey, I'm Ari Melber. Thanks for watching The Beat. I wanted to let you know I'm writing a foreword to the January 6th committee's full report, which is coming out soon from HarperCollins. You can go pre-order the book right now, and it'll come to you first when the report comes out, in the fall or whenever the government releases it. Just search Melber Jan 6 on Amazon or your favorite independent book site and click pre-order. You'll be the first to get both the report and my new piece on the coup conspiracy. You can also go to melberbook.com and order it there.